Hey folks, it's Rob Plux here with another Sunday session. And today uh, we're gonna be talking about importing uh, building materials from overseas. Now, a lot of us find the cost of construction has gone through the roof uh, and we're looking for different ways that we can actually get economies of scale in what it is that we're doing. Uh, so whether you're doing an absolutely small project or you're doing something massive, there are opportunities to import your materials from overseas. Now, in order to do that, I've got a very special guest here, Lindy Chen from China Direct uh, Imports. So Lindy, how are you? Good morning, Rob. Very good. Uh, so we're going to be talking all about uh, importing from China uh, and I guess some of the issues and challenges and also the opportunities that are actually uh, sitting there. So uh, now before we talk about that, tell us a little bit about who is Lindy and who is China Direct Sourcing and, and how did this all come about? Well, uh, Lindy Chen, I'm the founder and uh, managing director of China Direct Sourcing. We established in year 2005. That's nearly, nearly 20 years ago. And we helped thousands and thousands of Australian businesses importing products from China. And we have more than 30,000 suppliers on our database. Wow, 30,000 and 20 years, that's a massive amount of time. Uh, and I guess while we're talking about, I guess, the building and construction industry, you're looking at many, many, many industries, aren't you? Absolutely. Um, not only we focus on uh, like construction industry, we actually help our customer import from button to bulldozer. But however, recently in construction industry, we successfully secured over $130 million procurement contract. And that is very special in the, in the construction industry. Yeah, absolutely. So look, let's talk about the opportunity. A lot of people, uh, I guess, uh, I guess seeing the, the expense of uh, the building materials having gone up uh, over the last couple of years, uh, an extraordinary amount, uh, they're looking to make some savings. What kind of savings could they anticipate by going down an approach uh, using services like yourselves? Well, in general, to say we can easily uh, help our client save, you know, from 30% to uh, 50%. And that really depends on the size of the project and then the product they're choosing and also the method they use. But uh, some to some extreme, we save our client like 70% or even more. Some project we would save like, say, you know, 20%. So it uh, really depends on um, their own particular projects. Yeah, and every project is unique. Some people are just doing, uh, I guess, a small knockdown rebuild and some people are building, you know, a, a 200 apartment complex and that sort of thing. So obviously economies of scale come uh, from a lot of those things and, and we're going to talk about a little bit later in the show uh, how that that uh, uh, plays out when they've got smaller scales um, but uh, there's still savings to be had all the way around um i guess one of the reasons why importing from china is so attractive is when we go onto our retail shelf and we go into all of our different suppliers uh, here in australia in many instances it is already made in china in the first place and so uh I guess what we're looking at here is the ability to potentially shortcut the wholesale, sorry, the retail market and go wholesale. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. You know, especially um, with the pathway and the solution we have created enabled, you know, the smaller developers to buy directly from the Chinese factory, from the Chinese outlet. Yeah. And uh, also one of the opportunities that, a lot of people probably don't even think to realize uh, China supplies many, many, many markets, not just Australia. And so quite often there's product that is created in China that might go to the US market or the European market and that sort of thing. So just the variety of product uh, now starts to become wider. Now there's some challenges with regards to Australian standards and things like that. But um, the opportunity to create a different and unique product that nobody else is doing as well. Absolutely. We have quite a few customers and then they actually buy the products and then rebrand it, like put their own brand and then sell it in Australian market. It is used to be sell very well in America or in UK and they haven't, you know, come to Australian market yet and they, they do that. And so then therefore create a particular unique space for them in the Australian market. 
yeah so so we understand the opportunity um but there's a whole bunch of challenges and a whole bunch of complexities uh, that when people start going down this path uh it can become a little bit overwhelming so i'm going to dive into each of the individual challenges and uh i guess dive into why sometimes that can be a little bit complex for people uh and then uh at the end of this we'll kind of understand how does china direct sourcing solve a lot of those problems so uh let's start with the first one quality control now china's got a little bit of a reputation that uh they have two different completely different standards of quality um they've got the the cheap and nasty quality and then they've got this really high-end uh product um that that uh is created so that quality control when we're ordering overseas we don't know which version of that that we're actually getting you're exactly right and so therefore you know for us to help our client to do that quality control or quality issue it's a very similar thing like you know you uh have uh, find a supplier in uh, Australia. They are what we call the good supplier and they are shonky supplier. And uh, to identify the good supplier need a constant systematic way to dig out the golden nuggets. Yeah, and you mentioned that you've got, I think you said 30,000 different suppliers on your database. Yes. That's a lot. <laughs> uh, how do you keep up with all of that? Well, we have the technology behind it. Not only we have China Direct Sourcing, we have, you see the company called the Freezer. That is the technology uh, platform behind it. And so therefore, you know, we have uh, the team, we have the development team, we have the tech team and the two, uh, you know, support. Uh, we're actually managing the large database and we use a systematic way to help our clients to identify the gold supplier. Okay, so uh, so you've got a, a, a wide range of suppliers that we can actually choose from. Um, I guess from uh, me as a consumer, uh, if I'm looking for, for alternative product out there without having your massive 30,000 uh, database of suppliers, uh, typically I'm just gonna do some basic Google searching and I'm gonna look at suppliers like uh, Alibaba and, and the like. Uh, and you've mentioned that there's a couple of other local, uh, I guess, uh, websites that do similar. Uh, so I think you said, uh, and I might pronounce this wrong, uh, uh, Taobao and uh, Deng Huang. Deng Huang, yes, Taobao and Deng Huang. Yeah, the, I, I won't get the pronunciation right. But so all of those suppliers uh, out there, they're going to list all of the different um, products that are out there with all the different manufacturers. But if you're scouring all of that, you've got no uh, no idea behind the scenes whether or not those suppliers are good or not. You are absolutely right. When we uh, shortlist a supplier for our customer, uh, we are not only just look at the price only. So at least there are eight metrics we would look into before we assess a particular given supplier. Number one, for instance, would be uh, their track records in export and uh, which country country do they export to, such as uh, America, USA, Australia, uh, New Zealand, Europe, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So look at their track records on export history. And number two is their quality control uh, system. Or do they any like have any Australian standard compliance or like UK uh, quality control uh, compliance or any particular certificate? Number three is their price competitiveness. You know whether they are in the market in the range and you know compared to other supplier. And number three is uh, like you know they are uh, such as uh, um, the person you are dealing with and uh, whether they are professional or not. Uh, another one would be their website, their looking and the touch and feel how, how like you know really dealing with you. Another one is their internal system. And so you know you you have the whole matrix to look at uh, this manufacturer, whether you actually choose to use or not. So that's a whole bunch of stuff. And so uh, if they don't pass all eight of those tests, they don't make it onto that thirty thousand list of databases, is that right? 
So in general to say, in our database, uh, we have done, this is our 20 years of work. <laughs> we have accumulated its an asset and certainly it benefited to many of our customers. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, so even if we did scour those people and even if we found some products that we think we like, um, then there starts to become some other problems. So uh, for example, uh, the product, we don't know whether or not that supplier um, meets the Australian standards. And so if we uh, import the product, um, it might not be legally compliant uh, here. So uh, there's a whole bunch of standards that that uh, exist out there. What what would be the thing that you're looking for to ensure that that supplier has got the, the, the right certifications? In general, to say, uh, when we uh, look at the supplier, and uh, especially if the products related and the import need to be import require the Australian standards, then we would only choose the supplier who has the Australian uh, certificate or like uh, standards. Otherwise, it's too difficult for the smaller player uh, playing in the importing field. So what if there's this really, really great product that I find? Um, it's the only thing, it's perfect for my, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do this really fantastic high-end product. And this supplier has never imported to Australia, hasn't got any Australian standards. Uh, is there a process that we could actually onboard that supplier uh, and actually go through the journey? Because we really want that product. Is that possible? Absolutely, that's uh, that's very possible. Then we can work with uh, the customer and work with the supplier, and then to enable that process happening. Quite often, you know, we will talk to the relevant authority, like in Australia, and then to understand their requirements, and then having the supplier like providing all the uh, documentation meets the requirements. What will happen is uh, the most difficult part is the manufacturer does not know what Australian authority normally require. And we became the agent to assist them to, uh, you know, be compliant and fill in all the documentation and to apply for that certification. And quite often, you know, it can happen. And does that, I'm assuming that process takes quite some time uh, to do. So if we're looking at doing something like that, how much extra time and effort does that add to the process? Well, in that scenario, uh, that will probably more decided uh, by the uh, local bureau of Australian relevant department. For example, you know, one of my customer imported the buggy and uh, to be used in the golf course. And that actually need Australian uh, motor vehicles license. So uh, then in the end, we speed up the process. We got that uh, uh, motor vehicle license for that buggy within 20 days. But also because of the local government is willing to speed up the process. So that's the whole uh, license application probably only take around the 30 days. But uh, some other uh, permits, and it really depends on what the Australian government says. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. So, uh, I've found, I've searched my supplier. I found a supplier that I like that sort of thing. I'm looking at their website. Um, but everything's written in Chinese. I don't know how to interpret that. Um, uh, how do I even know that that product is fit for purpose? Um, you know, how th there's going to be, not only is there going to be language barrier differences, but there'll also be cultural differences. Uh, so when we're trying to have these conversations and negotiate, uh, that can, that can be quite tricky. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Quite often, you know, sometimes talk about the language barrier, and there are many jokes, and uh, uh, you, you know, and you sometimes went to a Chinese bank, you see the the translation says uh, to mail only, and then you wonder what, like what about the female customer? So actually, it's a literally translation wrong, and it says to business only. <laughs> but <laughs> the Chinese uh, translation to business and to mail is the same words as gong, 
So therefore, you know, some literal translation doesn't make any sense. And then, you know, in another scenario, like you, you, you talk about the language barrier. So you saw a sign says that, you know, uh, sliding carefully. So in actually the fact it says, you know, it's very uh, like, uh, be careful. It's very uh, slippery and, uh, you know, don't, don't slide. So the translation sometimes can get you nowhere. And therefore, you really need someone understand the culture difference, understand the language to facilitate the transaction. And, and uh, I'm not Chinese in any way, shape or form. So, uh, but my understanding is it's because uh, the language is a tonal language and not a not a spelling language. Uh, and so sometimes the word can be spelt the same way, but pronounced differently and have very different meanings. Absolutely right. Yeah. So, uh, so there's yeah, lots of ways, uh, and I'm not even going to attempt to do any of that. I'll get it completely wrong. But uh, hence, why sometimes uh, I guess that uh, that literal translation goes wrong. So, um, okay. So you help us to actually navigate the, I guess the the cultural differences and the language barriers and that sort of thing to actually get that translation correct. Um, but then many times. Uh, the suppliers that we're trying to deal with, um, they're wanting to deal with business to business. They're not wanting to deal with business to consumer. Uh, and so if we are one person placing one order, sometimes there's going to be all sorts of challenges with regards to minimum order quantities um, or the fact that they, they just don't want to deal with one person. So uh, how does your organization help to navigate that? Perfect. There are two uh, opportunities arise from there. One is, uh, you know, for any single like small developers and they have uh, multiple items, but a small quantity such as, you know, three doors, four windows, one bathroom, one kitchen, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, many, many different items, but uh, like a large variety, then we would design what we call the, the China buying trip. So through China buying trip, you have a list of the items you want to buy for your uh, development, for your construction project. And then you also have uh, the detailed assessment says how much it's going to cost you locally. So you have a budget in your mind. Then we would review uh, your list of the products and then give the recommendation says, yep, uh, Rob, the item one, two, three is good for importing, item six, seven, uh, maybe not, or et cetera. And then you, we do a little bit of research beforehand. We prepare the itinerary. We will then suggest, Rob, you, you have a trip to China. Okay, we take you to the wholesale market. You can see and feel and touch the product. You make a decision, you buy this, buy that. And because you already know the local price. So when you go to China, you take that price in your hand. You can do the comparison straight away and you make a decision you buy this or not. So therefore, after your trip, then we consolidate all your container together and uh, then put everything in one uh, shipment and deliver to your site. So then in that way, we overcome the, the minimum order quantity and as well as, uh, you know, to simplify the, the process and consolidate the con container and do the cost saving. Not uh, only that, but also because we have already done $130 million procurement contract for other developers and for other uh, projects. So we can tap into existing opportunity we have created the relationship we had with the supplier to enable uh, the smaller developer like you to utilize those uh, um the, the the strengths yeah absolutely so like so you mentioned a, a potential trip so uh, is that going to individual factories or is that going to places like the canton fair or is there a combination of both well, in general, to say it's a combination of a wholesale market and the factory. And uh, a Canton Fair is different. Canton Fair is you can see and you can have a feel you can't buy. Okay. So, but a China buying trip is designed for you to buy. It's ready, you see and feel and touch and you can buy, place the order on the spot. Okay, excellent. Um, okay, so uh, so we've worked out how to do our minimum quantities. We've worked out how to, you know, if we haven't quite got that right. Um, but then there's just the 
the international trade complexities. So there's, uh, there's customs rules, there's things like import duties, there's all sorts of things like that, that, uh, that start to challenge us. What are some of the problems that we need to think about? Well, you see, let's say, for instance, uh, when you export products from China, and they are five different prices you talk about. The first one would we call the XW, EXW price. So so-called EXW price means export out from the factory. Then you have FOB price. So-called FOB price is a free on board. That means the products from the factory delivered to China port. And then the next price is called the CIF, cost of goods plus insurance plus the freight. That means when the product delivered to Australian port. And then you have a landed price. That means when the products went through the custom and went through local delivery delivered to your site. So therefore, quite often, when you're dealing with uh, the uh, importing process, you need to understand what price is the best uh, scenario for uh, your situation. For example, if you import one item and a large quantity, usually we would recommend get the price as FOB price. But say, for instance, for uh, in, uh, like a buying a China buying trip, you buy from wholesale market, you paid everything in Chinese currency which is the main B. Then all of those products, you get price as X work, which is EXW price. So have to then put it into uh, one warehouse in Guangzhou and consolidate all of them in one container and then do all the uh, uh, Chinese custom clearance uh, fumigation in one go. And then became FOB, uh, price in one container and generate bill of lading then to export to Australia. That's a lot of complexity, which is which is why a lot of people don't do this. Um, then on top of that, OK, even if we do all of that, uh, a really, really interesting one, which I didn't know anything about until you mentioned to me before, Lindy, um, is the fact that the banking system in China is completely different to here in Australia. Uh, and there's no such thing as a BSB or an account number. So sometimes you want to buy something, but we just don't even know how to pay for it. Exactly right. And especially recently, China made it even more difficult for foreigners. Um, the in our system, we have a BSB and we have a account number. But in China, they don't have such a thing. So therefore, when you start to transfer money directly from your, your bank account to the supplier, it's extremely difficult, especially when you're trying to fill in the remittance, like uh, uh, the, the note, and you find quite often can easily lost. One of my customer um, filled in you know, money, it's not a lot, probably around uh, you know, $15,000, but uh, then the money lost in somewhere. And he doesn't even know the the, the supplier's bank didn't receive it. His bank says to send it and they don't know where the money is. So not only that, and, uh, you know, dealing with 20 or 30 supplier in one go, when you pay, try to pay money to them, and especially in wholesale market, because it's ex work. So therefore, they ask you to pay Chinese currency, which is the minbi. It can be very challenging because you cannot uh in china most of the payment now use digital payment which is wechat pay and also alipay but as a foreigner we can't have a wechat pay account because we don't have the chinese bank account and we can't use alipay uh, either because we don't have a chinese bank account so make it extremely difficult. And sometimes in wholesale market, you have to use cash to pay and imagine how much cash you have to bring with you. Yeah, well, there's there's rules about how much cash you'll have to, uh, to carry over the border. So that makes things difficult as well. So, um, so all of that uh, plus 
I guess just the fact that it's a different currency as well means that there's going to be, I guess, currency fluctuations. So uh, the price might not change, but just because the international uh, currency rate changes from time to time can have an impact on price as well. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, you know, um, that's why have a little bit of prior pr planning is probably more uh, better. And then knowing sometimes, you know, we have one scenario, we lock the price for the supplier for nearly uh, two years. Yeah, wow. And and then you then you transfer the money when the Australian dollar is doing much better. Yes. Yes. We only <laughs> pay a small amount of de deposit first. And yes. then we hold it, yes. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, okay, so all of that is uh, great. We've, we've worked out what we want. We've worked out, uh, I guess, uh, how to source it and how to price it and, and how to now pay for it. Um, now we've got to worry about, uh, I guess, warranty uh, on the product. So if we're going to be importing this uh, into Australia, uh, and if we, my understanding at least, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, my understanding is if I import it, then I become the importer. And so I'm the one who has to provide the warranty for this. That's correct. So normally we would recommend our customer say, say, you know, look, your total project, let's say is a 200,000, right? And if you're going to buy from Australia, it's going to cost you 200,000. But because you buy from China, it saved you $100,000. So therefore, then from that $100,000 you saved, you allocate maybe say 5%, which is $5,000. as just, you know, the budget for in case something happened. So, so then in that way. Contingency, basically to say what happens if something goes wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then in that way, you know, you still get the benefit, but you're not panic. You're not spending like, you know, 100,000 you have already saved. You are not prepared for it. You prepare for the if something happened. But of course, in the whole scenario, we choose the best quality product. We choose the best, like, you know, the supplier. We make sure the whole process is uh, take, take care of like uh, properly. But of course, you still prepare some contingency. Yeah. And, and that supplier would still have an obligation for warranty to us. But where I'm talking about is the ultimate consumer who buys the finished house off of us. We are their warranty supplier. So we have to, I guess, uh, have this double sided transaction where we're looking after our purchaser uh, and then we're dealing with the, I guess, the, uh, the factory at the same time. So uh, now the factory might give us a new one. They should. Um, that's what they're meant to do. But if they don't, um, there's a legal process and di legal differences between the two countries. Uh, and we've got to look at, firstly, which country should we be trying to chase them in? Uh, and secondly, is it worthwhile given the, the additional costs and complexity of doing that? So which country should we sue them in if, if they provide a faulty product, Lindy? China. Absolutely. China. <laughs> And, and also another thing is, uh, it's a very similar thing like you do in Australia. You also can buy insurance for when you transit the products from China to Australia as well. And then usually the uh, insurance company have a local agent in uh, Brisbane, Melbourne or Sydney. And uh, before you open the container, you can actually, uh, if something happens, you can call them. And they will tell you what to do. They either say, you know, take a photo, send to us, then you can open the container, or they will say, wait, we will send the agent to your container to see what happened. Yeah, yeah. So uh, all of that now, um, we've, we've got to the point where we've purchased our product, that sort of thing. Um, we've navigated, how do we get it across the border? But it's not actually made it into a container yet. We've still got to put it on the ship and still got to kind of get it here. Um, how does that work from a freight and logistics perspective? What are the, some of the issues and challenges from a freight perspective? Well, you see, then you, first of all, you need to uh, clear the Chinese custom. You know, to clear the Ch Chinese custom is not an easy job, especially you have a multiple item and uh, then you have to declare, go through the Chinese custom. Number two, you have to go through uh, the fumigation and make sure the fumigation certificate, it meets Australian standard. 
And once that is done, the next one is to arrange the uh, shipping and then make sure you choose the right port arriving uh, like uh, Australia and also the right shipping line. Sometimes the shipping line uh, can be uh, like a direct shipping line, which takes 17 days from Guangzhou, say, to, for instance, Brisbane. Sometimes it can go through transit and, you know, go through uh, Singapore. And, you know, it really depends on which uh, shipping line you choose. And then not only that, you know, uh, you're dealing with the supplier or the customer uh, custom in China and also we, what we call the have to do telex releasing, yeah, which doesn't have to wait original bill of lading send it to you and uh, it will take too long. So we usually talk to the supplier, make sure it does telex releasing, which means once you pay the balance, and then the telex is, uh, you know, the bill of lading is released to you. So then, therefore, once it's arrived in Australian port and you can do the custom clearance in Australian side and then arrange the local delivery, deliver to the site. But there's a lot of complexity in that. And then all, all of that, we haven't even talked about, you know, are we putting this in a cardboard box? Are we putting this in a shipping container? Uh, are we sending this via international freight? Like, um, what's the most cost effective way to, to, to import? What's the most cost effective? Well, it's uh, usually uh, when I when we look at the container, like a list of the, the, the products, so you review all of them. Then one thing we always have to remember is called the economy of the scale. So number one, you look at it, the list of the products, is it going to fit it to a 20 foot container or a 40 foot container? And so therefore you work out what would be the absolute the item I needed, the essential item, and what are the option items. So you work out the volume of the essential item. Let's say for instance, the essential item like a kitchen, bathroom, uh, windows and doors and the tiles, et cetera, et cetera, are all uh, already purchased for two bedroom uh, townhouses, three bedroom townhouses, four of them, five of them. Then the whole list now is already, say for instance, 50 cubic meter. And then it definitely have to go to a 40 foot container. For a 40 foot container, the total capacity is about 58 cubic meter. So you have eight cubic meter left. Then therefore you can choose some, some other optional item, such as for instance, the insulation products. And for in the insulation products, it can condense. And also then if you still have two uh, cubic meter, you can order maybe some furniture, you can order some linen for your house, or you can order something extra to utilize that capacity. And so that is what we call the economy of the, the scale to make sure the whole shipping is not only take advantage of the, 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 the price of the goods, but also the freight. We, you know, make it very cost effective. And the third one is also look at it, uh, whether you are a farm or whether you have a, like extra space or whether you want to build some uh, like a particular uh, like a studio, you can actually purchase in the container from China and together with your goods. So you only uh, say pay the freight once. And therefore, once the container arrived at your site, you can keep that container after and then you have a space to uh, secure all your goods. And then once you use the app, uh, all the goods, and then you can refurbish that container into a studio, one better, or you know, or you can sell it, or you can relocate your other property, something like that. Lots of opportunities and, and hence lots of complexities in doing all of that. Uh, so, uh, but the key takeaway is we want to get it to a 20 foot or a 40 foot container. And, uh, and sometimes that means not purchasing something so that it fits in a container. And other times it says, well, we've actually got more room. Could we buy more stuff? Uh, and, and what might those other things might be? Sometimes maybe a big screen TV, who knows? Um, or a fridge. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, some complexities with, with regards to the size of the order that we're actually doing, because you're dealing with wholesale manufacturing companies. And so I can imagine that there's 
uh, lots of different opportunities where um, they don't want to be doing small little uh, little orders. Um, but at the same time, because you're doing many, many, many orders for many, many people, they like the economies of scale that comes with that. So if you if I've got let's just go through the three different scenarios that might actually happen here. If I've got one item and I only need one of them, like what do I do in that instance? Well, if you want a one item and a one of them and a one off, then buy in Australia. Don't use yeah, us. <laughs> no, no efficiencies of scale. All Correct. Right, doesn't, doesn't make sense. Um, uh, okay, what if what if the opposite? I've got one item, but I've got hundreds of these that I need. Well, in that case, we would recommend like go through uh, China, like uh, China Direct Sourcing's uh, research and tender process. So then, in that, we probably will contact more than thirty supply in that category. Uh, we will prepare uh, like a, a request for quotes. We will ask the supply to tender. We we will prepare a supply summary report, quote comparison report landed cost analysis and to make sure uh, everything was taken into consideration and then shortlist the three supplier for this per this particular project to continue. Perfect. And uh, what about uh, the most likely one for, for small scale developers? I've got many, many, many items, but small quantities. So in that scenario, we would highly recommend the uh, China buying trip. And with China buying trip, uh, you can actually physically go to China with us or you stay home and via video, we do the purchasing for you. So either way, it's OK. However, we prefer you go to China, actually, because then you can see and feel and touch for many items and a small quantity. So you have a list of the item and everything you want to buy for this particular project. You make sure you know you get the list either from your architects or from the quantity surveyor. And then once you have that, you also have a budget about how much it's going to cost in Australia. And then we take you uh, to the China wholesale market. So before you go, we actually will uh, study your list and then we arrange the itinerary. We share that itinerary with you. Uh, then we send your invitation letter. We we suggest that, you know, uh, like Rob, go to China for t three days, four days. And then we take you to the factory, to a wholesale market. And then you see and feel and touch the product and it's in your hand. You compare the prices. You often find the price in uh, Australia and compared to in China, China is about like, say, you know, 30, 50, 70 percent cheaper. And sometimes, you know, even with the less of money, but the quality also much, much higher. You have a much more variety to choose from. So in, in that, you know, we have many case study for our client that the China buying trip and the saved uh, like, uh, you know, 100,000, 200,000, 500,000 easily. Yeah. So which means that, uh, uh, I guess, is, is it a tax deductible trip? Can you answer that? Absolutely. <laughs> because it is a tax deductible, deductible trip, the trip because we issue you the invoice. So folks, I, I have to say, uh, you know, that's not advice. Okay. I always have to put this little disclaimer up when things like that educational in nature and not advice, make sure you actually speak to your uh, accountant on that. But, uh, I guess in theory it should be able to because it's going directly to a project so uh but yes make sure you get that signed off folks um and okay uh, yeah because not only that you have plenty of things to support that such as itinerary the list of the products yeah. and then the cost of saving and also the items uh, itemized uh, like the product sourcing and uh, i have never had any issue for my customer claim our invoice for their project. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So all of this we've just covered, it is quite a complex, uh, process to actually do, uh, Lindy, hence why your organization, China direct sourcing actually exists. So if somebody wanted to engage with China direct sourcing, what is the process that they actually would go to, uh, to engage with yourselves? 
Well, yes, they can, you know, contact me through uh, uh, com or they can send us an email or I, if you like, I can share my number as well, which is uh, 0418-899-698, 0418-899-698. You can send me a text message, you can give me a call. Uh, you know, we can certainly look into your project. And also, we are doing a national uh, tour around uh, uh, like Australia. And also, you can always contact uh, you know Rob or Paula uh, PDN. We are PDN's uh, uh, annual member as well, and we are here to serve. We are here to make this community better. Yeah, I guess uh, we'll just touch on the fact that uh, Lindy and I are trying to work on a solution that's going to help our whole organisation to say how, uh, sorry that how. Oh, start that start that again we're trying to help our whole community uh of uh, how do we actually engage and get better pricing uh for all of our products and services and that sort of thing so we're working on something big in the background folks uh, i don't want to announce what that is just yet uh because there's still a whole bunch of stuff that needs to go in the back end but uh trying to make that more efficient more effective for absolutely everyone um lindy it's been an absolute pleasure uh, getting to uh, know you, uh, some of the issues and challenges that are sitting behind us uh, and the opportunities, more importantly, that are actually sitting, uh, I guess, uh, in front of everyone. Um, uh, thank you very much for your time and actually going through all of that. Any parting words of wisdom that you would like to give our audience? Well, absolutely. You know, one thing I would say, you know, uh, have an open mind try something new and you know sometimes uh, china or buying from china or group buying from china group buying construction material from china it's like a faster train doesn't matter you get on board or not the train will go and if you're jumping on board the train will take you if you don't train will leave without you so the benefit of you know importing from china and join this buying group join rob and lindy together you know importing from china it's like you know opportunities like a window and i want to encourage you just give it a try give it a go you know send your product list and then we will give you a review then you can see how will that look like and the only when we, we have a saying in Chinese, you know, doesn't matter how lucky you are, even when the gold landed in front of you, you still need to pick it up. So the opportunity is there and we just want you to get on board, pick up this opportunity. Absolutely. Thank you, Lindy. It's been an absolute pleasure. Now, uh, folks, uh, we get industry experts in here all the time to try and help you, uh, I guess, uh, get to know different issues and challenges and problems in your community. Uh, we also get them at our, uh, I guess, our monthly events that we run all the way around the country. Uh, so we run these events in Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne and Adelaide. Uh, and they are physical in each individual location. Plus, we live stream them. So no matter where you are, you're always going to get an industry expert just like Lindy, uh, I guess, helping you on your journey. Uh, folks, looking forward to seeing you all at our next uh, meetup. So, Lindy, thank you very much for your time. Uh, and I'm going to say signing off for now. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Okay, bye, folks. Bye.